Hey students, we're going to go ahead and continue our lecture on high blood pressure and treatment for high blood pressure. If you watched the video um, previous to this, you heard where I told you that I had a mouthful of sores. Well, this is day two of that, and it's even worse. My face looks all swollen. I've got sores all over my mouth and my tongue. It makes it very hard to talk, um, but I've got to get this lecture done. So, um, like I said, we're going to break this down into segments, which is easier to record for me and easier for you to watch it. So I'm going to, uh, we have a very short segment here. I'll share my screen. And what we're going to talk about now is um, treatment for high blood pressure. Okay, we've got to get that blood pressure down uh, because if we don't, uncontrolled blood pressure uh, over time causes organ damage in the body. And that's why it's called a silent killer because it's damaging you every time it's elevated and you don't necessarily have any symptoms that it's elevated. So we've got to get it down. So one of the things that the doctors will talk to you about is uh, non-pharmacological treatments for hypertension. And that means non-medicines. So what can we do that's not medicine related to get your blood pressure to go down? Well, let's do some lifestyle changes. The first thing is to change your diet to a healthy diet. And it's called the DASH diet, Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension, D-A-S-H. And if you look over here, it's pretty much fruits and vegetables and whole grains and nuts and lean meat, not fatty meats, low, low fats. Uh, I guess another way to call this diet is a healthy heart diet um but anyway so that's one thing you can change is is um change the way you eat and you can lower your blood pressure reduce your sodium intake so that's one thing you could do remember where sodium goes water follows and blood pressure goes up so read your labels and try to keep your sodium intake to less than 2400 milligrams a day increase your physical activity when you become more active, the heart and the blood vessels become better in shape and um, blood pressure can go down because you're just more active uh, over the long term. Uh, lose weight, get a BMI less than 25. So 18 to 24 is good uh, because if you can lose weight, then your heart doesn't have to pump it over as much body area. So um, losing weight helps. Drinking alcohol in moderation helps because if you drink a lot of alcohol, believe it or not, your blood pressure goes up. And then I want you to stop smoking too because when you smoke, nicotine vasoconstricts, it makes the blood vessels real little, which increases the pressure. So every one of these things here under lifestyle modifications is modifiable, every one of them. Um, and we, as a country, could do a lot better with all of this. Okay. All right. Moving on. Um, now, medicines. There are a ton of medicines. And this is just a warm-up right here. But they're called antihypertensives. And that's the pharmacological treatment for hypertension. The medicines. Anti, meaning against hypertension so the whole goal is to get the bp get the bp down and as you can see here there's all kinds and this is just a, a sampling of it but they're all different categories all different this is a category that's a category this is a different category that's a different category this is a different category this is a different category so there's all kinds of categories and all different medicines in here. But the thing is, is they all lower blood pressure, but in a different way. So most clients require more than one medicine or a combination of medicines to get their blood pressure under control. 
Um, let me give you an example if I can. My mom was on something like this, 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 and this. My husband is on this and this. And I'm on something like this and this. But I used to be on this right here. So, um, yeah, there's lots of meds here, guys. And uh, you'll see them every day. These are common medicines. And you'll probably uh, administer them to multiple patients once or twice a day. Okay. <clears throat> Now, when starting on an antihypertensive medicine, the provider will reevaluate the client in one month. It would be important to get the patient back in to see the provider to see if the blood pressure medicine worked. All we need is 30 days. Write that down. 30 days to see if it worked or not. I don't need two months. I don't need a year. I just need 30 days. So I want you to come back in in 30 days and let's reevaluate your blood pressure. So if the blood pressure has not been reached that we wanted, the dosage may be titrated up. So I have to maybe give you more of it or a second medicine might be added, but that would be up to the provider. And so the provider will continue to evaluate the client every 30 days. See, there's that number again, 30 days until the blood pressure uh, range is met. And that might take you a period of months to make sure that the, mm, let me, let me see. Let me, let me see if I can write this down somewhere. Let's, let's follow this along. Let's go 11. Oh, well, let's just say 11, 18. Oh, let's say 10, 18. And you had a blood pressure of 164 over 92. And we started John Ahmed, five milligrams. The doctor says, come in in a, in a month. So come in 1118. If your blood pressure is down and it's 118 over 72, whoops, 72, then this medicine is perfect. And we will continue on that. Okay, because that's all we needed was 30 days to see. But let's see. Suppose you came in on oh, 10, 18. Gosh, I, this is not working right for me. Act like the blood pressure's up. We started you on a med. We started you on five milligrams. Doctor says come back in a month. So 11, 18, we're coming back in. The blood pressure is down, but not good enough, but not good enough. I'm sorry, this uh, pen is not writing well for me, guys. I'm sorry, gosh, this is terrible. The blood pressure is down, but it's not good enough. Forget it, I'm not even gonna write on here. I'm just, now I'm getting irritated. Okay, come in, let's start over. Come in October 18th, your blood pressure is 160 over 90. We start you on five milligrams of medicine. We bring you back in 30 days later. If the blood pressure is down less than 120 and less than 80, then perfect. You'll, we'll keep you on five milligrams of medicine. Okay. And then we'll reevaluate you periodically to see if it's still working. And that's the best case scenario is in 30 days, your, your blood pressure is down perfect. But it usually doesn't work that easy. So you come in. October 18th, your blood pressure is 160 over 90. We start you on five milligrams of medicine. We bring you back in 30 days later on November 18th. Uh, the blood pressure is now 150 over 84, which is better, but it's still not less than 120 over 80. So the doctor will probably take you up to 10 milligrams of medicine, titrate you up, say, come back in in 30 days. When you come back in on September 18th, if the blood pressure is less than 120 over 80, then we will keep you on the 10 milligrams. If it's down, but not all the way down, then he might want to titrate up and or bring in a new medicine. So finally, 
after trial and error, we will find the medicine dose or the medicines together that will get your blood pressure down. And once we do, then down here at the bottom, the client will continue this medicine as a daily maintenance dose to keep the blood pressure under control. Okay. So hopefully um, that makes sense to you. Okay. Anytime an antihypertensive medicine is started or the dose is titrated up, the blood pressure could drop too low. Now, listen to me. Some people run blood pressures that look like this. And for some people, that's normal. But here's one way you know that if someone's blood pressure is truly too low, if you get like this number, 98, suppose they're normally 118s, 110s over 70s, and we up their dose. And now they're 98 over 59, and they're hypotensive now. You will know that is truly low for them because it'll create a vertigo, which is the dizziness. When your blood pressure is truly too low, you will get dizzy, okay? That's how you know. Uh, and that creates safety issues for your client. So just because you never make a decision based on one piece of data. You can't go in to everybody and say that 98 over 59 is too low of a blood pressure. If someone always runs that and they're not dizzy, well, then that's not too low. But someone who doesn't normally go that low and then they are dizzy, well, then that truly is too low at that point. Okay. So you have to know that. As a nurse, you please monitor your patients when we start them on antihypertensives or when we up their dose because we don't want to take them too low. Okay. All right. Now, hopefully you've heard as an aid, the orthostatic hypotension, also called postural hypotension. And that's a side effect of antihypertensives. That means your blood pressure can drop low when you stand up, sit up after lying down. So like if you go here and your blood pressure lying down was 118 over 70, and then you sat up and it went down to 100 over 60, and then you stood up and it dropped down to 90 over 50, and you are dizzy, then that is postural hypotension or orthostatic hypotension. And you can take blood pressures in these three positions, supine, sitting, and standing. And you can do that whenever you want to. You don't need an order to tell you to do it. But if the doctor wants you to get it, he'll prescribe it for you. And you'll you'll take the blood pressure with him laying down. Then you'll have him sit up. And then you'll have him stand up. Okay, And you will document the blood pressure and how he feels when he goes from a lying to a sitting to a standing position. In my opinion, I would not delegate these to the aid. Uh, this requires an assessment. And I would feel that that should be the nurse who's going to get these blood pressures. Now, the aide can be in there with you in case the man gets dizzy. But I'm not delegating that to the aide. I, I think as a nurse, I need to use my expertise and assessment skills. So uh, here's a question for you. Take action. Uh, what if the nurse attempts to stand the client? So we've already done this. Uh, we've already done it supine. We've already done it sitting. And you attempt the standing. And when he starts to stand up, he says, I'm going to pass out. What would you do? Lay him back down. Let it stop the blood pressure. Lay him back down. Maybe you can try it again in a minute. 
but lay him back down. Do not have him stand up if he says he's going to pass out. So one of the things that nurses always tell patients uh, when their blood pressures can drop is to change positions slowly. When you're going from sitting, from lying to sitting to standing, go slow. Let your body adapt to you being upright instead of on your back. Okay. And I think we'll end on this slide right here. Do not panic. All I want to show you here is there are different antihypertensive categories. All different types. Yep. And they look like they've got really weird names. I'll read some to you that are really weird. Beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, angiotensin II receptor blockers, ARBs, calcium channel blockers, things like that. Weird names. I'm going to teach you how to recognize most of them, most diuretics by the name. But there's all kinds of categories and they all decrease blood pressure, but in a different way. Okay. Now I'll show you here what I need you to know. So listen carefully. You need to know diuretics. Diuretics are water pills. And they're going to lower your blood pressure. But how? They lower blood pressure because they work in the kidneys and they allow kidneys to pee out or excrete sodium out into the urine. So when you're on a diuretic, it tells sodium to leave the body in the form of urine. And where sodium goes, water follows. And this is going to create an increase in your urine output. So with fluid loss, when the patient's peeing and losing fluid out of the body, then blood pressure goes down. So that's why diuretics are often prescribed to get your blood pressure down. There's another category called beta blockers. And the generic name ends in OLOL. -L. And yes, you do need to know that. And we'll see it here in a little bit. And what they do, and I'm not asking you to remember it now, but they beta blockers block certain receptor sites in the heart called the beta receptors, beta blockers. And if you block the beta receptors, then the blood pressure goes down. That's just the gist, okay? If you can understand that beta blockers lower blood pressure um, and they end in OLOL, I'm happy right now. Another category is called ACE inhibitors. A generic name ends in PRIL. Yes, you do need to know that. And they work a different way. But the main thing is, is blood pressure is going to go down. All right. Angiotensin II receptor blockers, ARBs, A-R-B-S, generic name, ends in Sartan. I'm on one, my husband's on one. They work a different way in the body. But no matter what they're doing, blood pressure goes down. Calcium channel blockers. Some generic names have PINE, P-I-N-E in them, but not all of them, okay? And they lower blood pressure a different way, but blood pressure will go down. Then there are vasodilators. And those medicines open up the blood vessel. And when you vasodilate, the pressure goes down. So that's what we're saying here is they're all different categories, but they all work a different way to get the blood pressure down. And you can recognize some nitrate, some vasodilators because they have the word nitrate in the name, but not all of them. Okay, so that concludes this part of our lecture. It's a nice little overview of how we treat blood pressure, how do you know the blood pressure got too low, and things like that. When we come back, we'll be jumping into diuretics. Okay, so see you shortly.